Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and around here we like to explore the world of fountain pens, ink, paper, all that good stuff, and compare them whenever we see two pens that look an awful lot alike, like today's pen. This is the Picasso 902, aka The Gentleman, and it is, as you can see, a black lacquered pen with some gold tone trim and a Picasso artwork on the cap that we'll get a look at here in just a second, but it's also very similar to the Scriviner that I reviewed just last week. And you might be asking, are these the same pen? Well, close, but not quite. And why would I choose one over the other or vice versa? Well, we'll talk about that in this video, and then you can make an informed decision about which of these pens might be a pen that you would want to add to your collection or give as a gift. So let's grab a cup of coffee, flip that camera around, and take a closer look. All right, here we have the Picasso Gentleman 902. So this is in black lacquer. It does have this painting known as the Dream. This is of Picasso's mistress when he was about 50 years old. So, you know, you may like or dislike that on the cap. At the time, this was the only one of these pens in stock where I could also get it engraved with JG3 reviews. And I just was doing that as a test of the quality of their engraving and we'll look at that closer here in just a second but on the day i'm recording this there are actually several options you, you can get this in a really nice red lacquer you can get it in black with white trim gold trim just solid black or you can get it like this so there are options you know at different times and probably from different sellers but i also thought this would be more interesting for this review and uh, just to show you what is available in the picasso gentleman model range so let's look look over the design elements of this pen. Let's start at the top. So at the finial you have PMO twice circling a little gold dot in the center then a gentle curve which looks just like the one on that Scriviner and then you come down to the clip which has the Picasso logo inset there. Now that clip is a matte finish compared to the glossy finish elsewhere and it just has gloss on the logo and these little trim bits. Then you come down to the band and you, again you have the Picasso logo and the Picasso signature. It all is nicely done. Again black paint inside that signature to let that really stand out and I think that's good. And then you come down to the barrel which in this case is engraved with the name of the channel. That is laser etching through the lacquer and that is the brass barrel underneath. So just burned off all the lacquer and made that engraving. And you can choose other fonts. I chose this one because I wanted to try just the simple bold font first. There are some scripted fonts that might be more appropriate for a gift or something like that. Then it tapers down slightly to this gold band trim and to that end, which is just a simple metal adornment at the end. The cap is a plastic line snap cap with a nice little snick snick, not too loose at all, which is always good, and has about the same performance as that Scriviner in terms of dry out. If you use the pen it, it, within a few days, you're not going to have any issues. Otherwise, you might need to do a little quick dip in some distilled water, and it'll be fine. All of this, by the way, is pretty well done, and I think certainly good within its price point. This pen with the engraving was about $26, I believe. It has the lacquered metal section, and like on the Scriviner, it does not slip around, and I find it a comfortable section. There is a bit of a step down. That step down is a little bit different on this pen than the other, as I'll show you in a second, uh, but a comfortable pen as long as you don't mind pens that are a little bit thin. Both these pens are thin pens. Now, as far as I know, this is an in-house made Picasso Chinese Steel Number no. 5 nib. It is a medium. It has the Picasso logo, a little bit of scrolling, and I think looks good. And I don't believe that this is actual gold trim, uh, but it is holding up pretty well on this nib. Then, of course, the same generic plastic feed you see on lots of pins. You do have at the end of that section a bit of a roll band so that will stop your hand from going down too far and getting inky and that's nice and it is a friction fit feed and nib. When you open up the pin what will we find? Well those grooves are metal on metal and then we find the included Picasso branded converter which is an international standard converter. It does take international standard cartridges as both of these pens do. I believe Picasso makes this. But it does, like a Schmidt, open right up, 
for maintenance and so you can take that out clean out that converter very very easily which I always like service it with a little silicone grease and you're good to go and it functions just fine all right now that I've shown you around the pin let's look at some things that are different and similar on these two pins first the overall shape between the Picasso above and the square Viner below is incredibly similar so it's not crazy to look at these pins and say are these the same pin and in many ways they are but there are some important differences and there are probably also some unimportant differences and and for thoroughness we'll just look at both of those starting at the top you'll notice that the Scriviner's finial is a lot thicker and I think a lot nicer uh, that's just a matter of personal taste I like their logo and the way that they feature that on the finial more than I like the Picasso logo and then you'll come down and you will see that that first black band is pretty much the same the gold band is the same although you'll notice the Scriviner uses gold trim where this uses a gold tone trim and so there are differences the clip at first looks the same except for the little Picasso elements but they're actually more different than that they are not the same length this ends in a semicircle and the Scriviner ends in what looks a bit more oval ended in that arch the grooves of the column on the Picasso and maybe it's just because of the matte finish or the difference in the way they're coated look a little bit more defined than on the Scriviner so that's you know not that would I would put that on the unimportant list but it might not be to you that might matter to you when you get to this band things are very much the same just a different logo you have the Scriviner logo here the Picasso logo here and uh, Scriviner on the back and Picasso on the back so extremely similar cat bands and then the trim here is pretty much identical the sections are almost identical the barrel is the same uh, these trim pieces the same however at the very end you find a difference again with the Picasso on the left having a more curved arch and the Scriviner being a bit flatter I don't know if that's a design choice between the two makers or if that's just different batches but those differences are there removing those caps and of course you reveal the difference in the nibs this is again I believe an in-house Picasso nib and it is a steel medium on my pen and I don't know what kind of a gold tone that they use but that is not gold this is but very thin and again mine is coming off but this is a Schmidt nib and I think we'll see in the writing that that can definitely make a difference and that would also explain the different feeds and uh, so those are not identical the grip sections look identical until you get to the trim band right before it screws in and then where one bevels out this bevels in and uh, just a little bit of a style difference there functionally the caps are interchangeable and they still snap on just fine because they probably actually snap over back here not up here and it really doesn't make any difference the parts can go back the sections can be used with the you can swap barrels and caps and it's no big deal all right let's do a quick size comparison and then we'll look at how this pen writes our size comparison for today first we had that pilot metropolitan at the top and then our pen of the day the Picasso 902 the Jinhao X350 another black and gold lacquered pen and of course the ubiquitous Lamy Safari as you can see this pen is thinner than all of these other pens and so you will want to keep that in mind but it is about the same length and here we have the pens in their posted lengths you will notice that the engraving doesn't line up with the nib that doesn't bother me but that's probably driving somebody a little batty and here we have the pens in their unposted length and that's where this pen is the smallest of the bunch for sure this nib is a medium the other pen is a fine and this is again a Picasso made nib as far as I understand it but it's a nice medium ink today is Pelican Royal Blue this is a stiff nib so you're not going to get any variation really this is zero pressure this is just light pressure medium pressure and all the pressure I'm going to give it and there is just very little difference between those lines it does do reverse writing okay that's something that I forget to do very often but 
not too bad. Uh, you just need to go slower than I just did. Check for wetness. And that's putting down plenty of ink on the paper. And let's do a quick speed test and see how it holds up. Now I'm going to do this lightly. I'm going to do my best not to lift and just see whether or not it keeps up with fast writing. No problem whatsoever. All right, let's talk about these two pens. And uh, I think part of the conversation has to be that the Scriviner is about twice what you pay for the Picasso gentleman. So the question for most people is going to be, is it really worth the difference? And I'm going to say that that is really up to you. Here are the things that I would look at. I happen to like the, I'm going to say quieter style of this Scriviner. Now you can get this without the artwork on the cap and all of that, but just in general, I like it better. I like the finial a little bit better and things like that. But that's not enough to justify the price, just that alone. I like the Schmidt nib just ever so slightly better. I can't even quite explain why. Both of them write well. This medium, as you can see, writes nice and smoothly. There are no issues that I can see with it. I haven't had any trouble with it. I've had it for months and months. And uh, I, don't, I don't mind this nib at all. I think it's a bit more generic, the medium on the Picasso, but it is a good generic. Does that make sense? So I, I like the Schmidt. There's just something about it uh, similar to other pens that I've had with Schmidt nibs as well. And uh, I like that. I, I do think I like that it comes with a Schmidt converter. Uh, it seems just a little bit better made. And uh, so there is that. Again, is that enough for you? Does a Schmidt nib and a Schmidt converter uh, make you think that you would rather buy that? Maybe, maybe not. The other main difference I would say is this, but I want to say it with this caveat. I haven't had to test it. With the Scriviner is the promise of customer service. They say in their materials that that is something that is very important to the people who work at Scriviner. So that is a bonus that you don't get with the Picasso, at least not in the U.S. market. So uh, with this pen, you're probably at the mercy of the seller. And there are some good sellers, so maybe that's good, maybe it's not. But this pen is backed with the with the expressed commitment that there will be better customer service. Again, I haven't put that to the test. I haven't had a reason to. Uh, if you have, please share that in the comments below for either of these two pen companies. I think it would be helpful if you would share your experiences if you have any that way. Um, you do get more nib options. You get extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And you can put other Schmidt nibs of the same size if you have other varieties like stubs as well. I think that's a big bonus. I think for a lot of you, that nib choice, greater nib choice from a German nib maker, uh, you're going to consider that difference to be worthwhile. And I can totally understand why you would feel that way. And uh, I do think that's a good characteristic of the Scriviner pen over the Picasso. So it does come down to your preferences. Both of these pens that I have are in great working order. They're comfortable pens to write with. They've been reliable. They write well. I enjoy both of these pens. I do enjoy the Scriviner better. I think it's just those little little things kind of add up to just a slightly better pen in my view, but that may not be your view. Feel free to express disagreement in the comments below. And and I think that's the way I'm going to wrap that up, is now the ball is in your court. What do you think? Neither is a bad pen. They are different prices. They do have some different things on the table. Which one 
would you choose? And then one last question. I got some feedback in the Scrivener review and in some emails about some brands that you would like to see reviewed that like these pens are often found on Amazon or Etsy and you're not sure about them. Give me a list of pens that you would like to see me review that way. I would be glad to order some of these as long as they're reasonable in price. You know, I'm, I'm not going for something I've never heard of that costs an arm and a leg, but if they're kind of in this more affordable realm, then I'll put them on my list and consider it. I may not get to all of them because there are a lot out there, but I will be glad to get to those that I can and share with you my impressions of those pins as well. And then let me remind you, I am going to talk about just that, navigating Amazon and Etsy and some things like that in a follow-up video here in the next week or so. So be sure and subscribe and hit that bell so that you'll know when that video lands as well. And in the meantime, God bless you and have a great week.